So, thank you everyone for coming. Today we're going to continue with our series of seminars, with the pedestrians series of seminars. And today we have Joaquin Santos from, from here, from IFIC, who is going to talk about resonances in, in the to be effective Lavendia. So, you can start with another. Okay, thank you, Adrian. Well, I'm going to talk today about my work. It's Resonances in the Electroweak Effective Lagrangian. That's a work of strongly coupled models and effective field theory coming all together. Well, my work is in collaboration with Antonio Pig, uh, Nacho Rosé, and Juan José Antillero. And here is the motivation of, of this work, of why the resonances in the electroweak Lagrangian. Generally, resonances are related to QCD and electroweak and QCD, sometimes they don't mix very well. Okay. The first point is that the standard model provides extremely successful description of electroweak and strong interaction. That's a thing we all know. Okay. A key feature of the electroweak interaction is the way the symmetry breaks. And this, this symmetry breaking gives rise to a new sector, the scalar sector, and in which we know the Higgs mechanism, the Higgs physics involved, but maybe there's something more, or maybe it's just only the, the Higgs physics. So if there's only the, the Higgs, as we know, it's the standard Higgs boson, are there are alternative mechanisms of mass generation? Well, to give an answer to all these questions, it's a nice point to study strongly coupled scenarios. And generally, strongly coupled scenarios are related to resonances. So if we want to study resonances in the electroweak sector, we have to create or, or model resonance electroweak theory. That will be similar to what happens in QCD, but the main difference with respect to QCD, well, in the next slide, is written, but it's that in QCD, we know the, fun the fu fundamental theory. We can model a chiral perturbation theory, that is the low energy theory. We can model a resonance chiral perturbation theory. But we can postulate and we can work on this Lagrangian in this framework, but knowing how the whole theory works in the high energy sector. But here we don't have anything. We just have electroweak theory, the standard model, and we can are going to build a resonance electroweak. So for doing this, we need to add constraints. In the, the first kind of constraints is the low energy constant. This is the, the, the normal way we put constraints. So we have our resonance theory, that's our high energy theory. And then we project this theory in the low energy theory. We do a matching between these theories. So we can compare the low energy values of the low energy theory and we can test this experimentally. But on the other side we are trying to make some constraints from the unknown theory. We are going to generalize properties of how has the fundamental theory has to be for the electric sector and then impose conditions over this. Okay. So well the scheme we are going to follow is this. It's a, it's, there's an equi equivalency, as I said, with QCD. We are doing to this resonance electroweak effective theory, and we have below the standard model, so resonance effective field theory is basically a standard model plus resonances. The most general Lagrangian we can construct with resonances, and then the matching, because all of these are treated as effective field theories. This is exactly the same that happens in chiral perturbation theory and resonance chiral perturbation theory. We integrate out the resonances and then project it into chiral perturbation theory. But all knowing how it works in the ultraviolet. But here we don't know anything. Wait. Okay, so the, the outline is we are going first of all to study how the standard model, how is the uh, way the symmetry breaks. Then we are going to build the resonance 
theory. And after that, we're going to analyze how these two effective field theory match and the constraints that come from this matching. These are the low energy constants. After that, we are going to, to impose conditions and constraints from the unknown F fundamental theory. And after that, we have a resonance theory with constraints, and we can test this theory, these strongly coupled general models with well, several tests from uh, low uh, down energies and up energies. OK, so as I said, we are going to start with the low energy Lagrangian. It's the standard model. And it's fundamental to know how the symmetry breaks. This is a thing you will know, or, or at least you have listened about it. So the main problem of the, well, the main problem that it, it has been solved. But the point of the standard model is that the, the standard model is a gauge model. And in this gauge, gauge model is built everything. So if we only focus on the gauge mm. character of the standard model, we derive that the gauge boson has to be massless. So we need to incorporate a way to make these gauge bosons become massive. So in other words, if we have a massless gauge bosons, that's to say they are vectors with two polarizations, we need to add three new degrees of freedom to make these gauge bosons to become massive. This is, these bosons have to acquire the new, a new longitudinal polarization, one degree of freedom, one new polarization for each of these, of these gauge bosons. The way we know, or the simplest way to do this, is considering a scalar Lagrangian in which we have a, a, a determined a scalar potential that has this form, that is this Mexican hat we have all seen. Well, the way we do is we introduce a, a doublet field of complex scalar field, that is, four degrees of freedom. In this four degrees of freedom, we want to incorporate these <laughs> three new degrees of freedom required. OK. If we attend to the Goldstone theorem, when we do, uh, w no, before of this, when, well, you all know that this is the symmetry, the gauge symmetry is respected. But when we choose a vacuum different from the, from the, from the top of the Mexican hat, we are maintaining the symmetry because the, 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 the potential and the Lagra scalar Lagrangian is symmetric under the symmetries of the standard model. But if we choose and we parameterize all the physics in a point that is different from the, from the zero, zero, we are describing our system in a non-symmetric way. But we never broke the gate symmetry. We are just describing all the standard model in a determined vacuum that is not symmetric, but the gate symmetry is always respected. OK. When we do this, when do parameterize the physics in a chosen vacuum of the, of the infinite vacuums that we have, we break the symmetry. Break, but we break the symmetry, but not the gate symmetry of the standard model. OK. When we do this, we generate as many Goldstone bosons and as the generators of the symmetry are break, broken. So we have here this. So we break three generators that correspond to the Goldstone boson. And in fact, when we consider all this problem and we analyze this scalar potential in the unitary gates, of course, we can do it in the unitary gates because gate symmetry has been always respected. We have not broken, we have not break, broken the, the, the gate symmetry. We can choose any gate in the unitary gate. We can see that these um, gauge bosons become massive. Okay. After this, well, to study the the lag scalar Lagrangian and the scalar sector, it's not common to see the potential in the way we saw in this way. To study the symmetry pattern to the, to the symmetry breaking pattern, we generally describe the scalar potential in this way, in terms of this matrix sigma that respects uh, an institute symmetry. OK. What we are doing with this way of expressing the scalar Lagrangian is 
putting this way, we are separating the Higgs field from the goldstones. When we do this and make an expansion in terms of Higgs over the, the vacuum, vacuum expectation value, we can we obtain this. This is like the effective field theory we are going to deal with. So now we have, first of all, the first term in, in our expansion will be the Goldstone, and after this we can add the Higgs field. This is the same that considering the Higgs to have infinite mass. Okay, when we do this, we can observe that only the term that breaks, the, that if we don't have this term, we can make the symmetry grow in the sense that this, if we consider that instead of having the SU2 plus, S plus U1 symmetry, we make this G prime go to zero, we can extend the symmetry to this. Okay, why we do this? We do this because this is simpler to deal with. We have a chiral in the sense that we are treating equally both the left side and the right side of the, of the symmetry and after that the G prime is very low and we can do always perturbation theory in terms of G prime, but it's not the case. Okay, when we do this, when we take G prime going to zero, the pattern of, of the electroweak breaking become this way. And this way and this symmetry breaking pattern is the way that we have in QCD with pions. Just changing <coughs> this expectation value for F pi and the Goldstone boson for the Goldstone boson of QCD that are the pions. Okay. Well, as I said before, when we take the Higgs mass going to infinity or just we take the first terms in the in the Lagrangian, just the Goldstone Lagrangian, we have this. So we want to do we want to make an effective field theory around this Goldstone Lagrangian. So we want to do expansion in powers of the momenta, that is the derivatives. If we want to create a parity theory, this imposes that we have to have even dimension. And if we take basic symmetry consideration, we take that the first term is n equal to one. So n equal to one. So the first term will be L2 plus L4 plus L6. That's to say the first <laughs> order in the Goldstone Lagrangian will be with two derivatives. This means that if we make a Goldstone Lagrangian, the first term uh, has two derivatives. So um, Goldstones um, behave the way it has to it, it has to be because Goldstones are free at zero momenta, and we have this with with this derivative behavior. Okay, and then of course this Lagrangian. Um, satisfy this SU2 times SU2 invariance. What is the point of doing this kind of, of symmetry? That if we take just this Lagrangian with the Goldstones and we take as well the uni unitary gates, what we obtain is that we are getting another time that the gates bosons become massive. And thi this gives, gives raise to the question instantaneously that if the Higgs does not generate the gauge boson masses, it's really necessary the Higgs mechanism. The point is that we have made a theory, a basic effective field theory, and we have applied to electroweak sector, and we have seen that we don't need the Higgs to generate these masses. So why we need the Higgs? The answer to this is that we need the Higgs for unitarity, for make the theory, the electroweak theory, unitary. So if we imagine a, a common process between a scattering of the, the charged Goldstone bosons, we have, if we don't consider the Higgs, we have that this simple three-level scattering has an amplitude that grows with the energy to the square. And we know that a, th a, a, a theory to behave well has to have amplitudes that at least 
grows as the unity, as a constant. <laughs> so we can see that if we add the, the standard model Higgs, we obtain an amplitude that it's the same but with opposite sign. So th there is a cancellation in this bad behavior of the energy and the, the amplitude behaves properly. This is one example. There are hundreds of examples that the Higgs restores the, unitari the, the unitarity of the, of the theory. This is one advice for saying that, okay, you cannot add everything you want to build a theory. The, when you build a theory, you have to be aware of a lot of things, as for example, unitarity. We, have to, we want to make renormalizable and unitary theories, and we have to be aware of these things. Okay. Um, okay. So what happens in QCD? Because in QCD, we don't have a Higgs and we have unitary. I, Q, QCD is a unitary theory. It's renormalizable, so it's unitary. In the case of QCD, what happens is that the, the unitarity is accomplished with the stains of resonances. The point is that the sigma resonance unitarized the the, the pion behavior. So in some way, <laughs> the sigma meson is the equivalent, the equivalent of the standard model six, but this is an effective object generated through rescattering and resummation of pion loops. So we can ask ourselves that can be the Higgs meson, the Higgs boson, something similar to the sigma meson? Well, the experimental test seems that no. Because we can consider that the Higgs is a resonance of the of W bosons, but first of all, we generally the resonance we have are spread. They they don't have a peak like the Higgs is. But well, we can explain that it could be because kinematical reasons, not just n nothing to do with dynamics. It could be that well, the the Higgs is n it's it's lower than two times the mass of the W, so kinematics uh, make the Higgs to be peaked, but we could, we could explain that resonance is that the Higgs could be an, a resonance, but it's difficult to explain all the interaction with the Higgs with the top and the Higgs with the, all the fermions and, and different stuff, just considering that the Higgs is a resonance. It doesn't seem to be the right answers, but in the case of QCD, we know it works very well, this, this program. Okay, well. Once we have clear the, the, the way the symmetry breaks, we want to build a Lagrangian, a low energy Lagrangian, in which we are going to project after that the resonance <laughs> Lagrangian. We have to consider that the resonance, the resonance that lives in SU2, they can be triplets or singlets, behave this way. This way. They transform this way where G8 are uh, terms of yes, as you to the, the custodial the custodial term. Okay, so we want if we want to deal with resonances, we have to build a low energy Lagrangian that behaves properly. That is to say that behaves similarly to what resonances do, because after that we, we we are going to match the theories and we have to well they have to respect the the symmetry. Okay, so if we are dealing with goldstones, we need to to study how the symmetry works with the goldstones. Okay, the goldstones are not here and are not here. The goldstones live in the coset in the in the coset group. This is that if we parameterize one goldstone boson, if we parameterize a goldstone in this way, that is to say, in the group G, we need a compensating uh, element of, of, of H to, to make the goldstone behave properly, because the goldstone is not living here. If the goldstone lived here, just is GL times UL dagger, and that's all. But we need an element to compensate this. Okay. Uh, apart from that, we have a freedom because a coset group is a class of groups, so we can we have a lot of choices 
to combine this u left to right. You know that u left to right then combine here. So we choose this canonical choice for expressing the Goldstone bosons. When we do this, we can see that the, the Goldstone that we described before the Goldstone we described before this U capital U can be described in terms of the parametrization of the Goldstone bosons with the canonical cho choice this way. So the capital U transforms this way. Okay? Once we know how the resonance is transforms under H and under G and the U transforms under G, what we need to do to build the Lagrangian is study terms, study build blocks that transforms the same way that resonance do. For example, we can consider a Lagrangian that with, for example, this kind of resonance and after that one Higgs boson. We know the Higgs boson transforms, it's a scalar, so it transforms as a scalar. So we can consider a Lagrangian, we can, we can have this kind of terms in the Lagrangian and also resonances. But, but we cannot add a gauge boson. A gauge boson transforms this way. If we want to respect the gauge, gauge invariant, we cannot mix this resonance with these gauge bosons. This GH and GL um, belong to different groups. We have to do building blocks, that is to say, consider for example this element, U mu, that is this way. It's a combination of Goldstone bosons and derivatives. Well, this U mu behaves just as the resonance do. So we can make, we can build a Lagrangian with U mu and this kind of resonances. The same way we can do with F mu nu. It's like like the like a, a tensor from the gauge boson. We can in incorporate the gauge bosons via this F mu nu that uh, transforms the same way. Well, we, if we analyze only bosonic Lagrangians, we arrive at the conclusion that only these three terms can be included in in our Lagrangian in our Lagrangian that behaves this way, that behaves as this symmetry. So, our Lagrangian will be a combination of these three terms. The low energy Lagrangian will be a combination of these three terms. Of course, the low energy Lagrangian doesn't have resonances. Okay, so when we want to construct our Lagrangian, we, have, we want a Lagrangian that is, that has parity properties, that good, pro good parity properties, charge conjugation properties, well, it has the good properties. So, we want to build the most general order P2 to, to, to the to, to N bosonic Lagrangian compatible with gauge invariance, Lorentz invariance. We want the parity to be even and C to be even. If we go to the first order of our effective field theory, that it was the two order two, the only Lagrangian we want we can build is this, because the we can we could build with f mu nu, but this is order p two. It has two derivatives. As you can see, f mu nu has the tensor uh, w mu nu that has two derivatives. Okay. And this is, of course, the same Lagrangian we obtain at chi pt at order p2. Why is this? Because the first order in the in our effective Lagrangian is not has no the dynamical information. It's just the Goldstone bosons interactions. It has no physics. It not has relevant physics in this Lagrangian. The physics is in the order p to the four in the next order, or our effective Lagrangian. Our our target is to build this P to the 4 Lagrangian. Okay, we do exactly the same. But we now we want to arrive to order P to the 4. We make combi combination of these building blocks we have that 
I remind you, these are only the only terms we can put in our Lagrangian because it has the proper gauge symmetries, the, and we make a, a Lagrangian. It's, it is the way it's one term, one coefficient, time, and operator. And you can build 13 operators. This is the way, for example, if we consider this operator, we know that this, res this operator respects the good properties of, of this symmetry because it is made out of terms of, or building blocks we know that behaves properly. So after that we want to know if this operator has the parity good properties. So we go to, the to, to this table and we know that f, mi f, f mu, perdón, I, sorry, f plus has the plus sign when we change parity and u mu when we change parity has a minus sign we have a commutator two minus so it has the proper parity we can do the same with charge conjugation and we arrive that this is an operator that is well behaved under gauge symmetry parity and charge conjugation and of course all the all the Lorentz indices are are contracted and these are the 10 operators that satisfy these relations and in this column we have put the operators that are not even under parity are not even under charge conjugation but they satisfy uh, CP for example the same operator but instead of this plus we have this minus the parity has a minus so this operator doesn't satisfy parity but the same way we can see that also doesn't satisfy charge conjugation. But if we mix the two uh, discrete symmetries, we know that this operator is well behaved. Okay, and this is what we can do with bosonic operators. What happens with fermions? This is the, the problem, the difficulty is to add fermions. Well, to introduce the fermions, to do the same. Of course, we cannot add just no. There's ah, it's here. Okay, we cannot add the fermion directly. We want a fermion that, well, the fermion you know that transforms just as in the, in the chiral wave. So the way we can put fermions into our action is via this 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 cheese that transform the same way. So we can now we have the three building blocks we had before and we have fermions okay the problem when we put fermions in the action is that the power counting becomes not trivial we in the previous bosonic lagrangian we organized our calculation only considering the derivatives it has La a lagrangian of order p to the square has two derivatives two momentum terms a, Lagran a lagrangian with um, Order four has four derivatives, or, or or tens that behave like like derivatives. In the case of in the case of fermions, we have to change the power counting, and we the power counting we have is considered also d that d is the 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 derivative contribution, and then the fermion legs. We have to consider this. Well, this is a hard calculation, and we obtain this. So. With this power counting, the chain, the, the things change. So we can organize, for example, a, 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 upper, a, a Lagrangian with mm, dimension two, the new dimension, the new counting dimension two, can be built the same way we had before. This is the same Lagrangian we had before, the, the goldstones and kinetic terms of the of the gauge boson, this is the Lagrangian we had before, but putting also the, the kinetic terms. But we also can make, we can put more fermions. You know that decreasing one derivative, we can put two fermion contributions. And decreasing more derivatives, we can include a lot of fermions. The problem is that if we put fermions in the action, fermions appear and grow a lot, grow twice as the other terms. This has a lot of problems because, well, 
the of course the, the first order is just the terms that appear in the standard model Lagrangian. This is if this is see if you consider this as um, fermions, just like this. This is the kinetic terms of the fermions in the Lagrangian plus one plus boson inter um, Goldstein interaction and other terms. Moreover, appear there are terms that are not well behaved because this term, for example, appear at the lowest order of our fermion term, but we know experimentally that these kind of terms are very suppressed. The problem of this may be that we, in our calculation, we are not considering the we are not considering in our calculation the effect of the symmetry breaking of the standard model. We, when we consider this kind of terms, we are just mixing left and right chiralities of the fermions. And if we consider a pattern in which custodial symmetry, chiral symmetry is expected, we are disconsidering this kind of terms. So in the future, we have to make additional considerations to incorporate this kind of symmetry breaking term in our calculation. But we can make as well a base of operators and then we can in the future we will eliminate some that we consider that are suppressed by another mechanism. Well, when we do this we have a lot of operators. There are a huge number of operators. We cannot deal with as many operators. We change we passed from thirteen operators to hundred and ninety four operators. This is this is huge. We need a new mechanisms to reduce this number of of operators with fermions. This is the difficulty of working with fermions that a problem that well it's not good to have thirteen operators, there are too many, but hundred and ninety four is truly a very high number. But well it's our base and we can work with them. A lot of work, but we can work. Okay. When we have clear the low energy Lagrangian, we can go to the high energy. We do the same. The low energy Lagrangian is the same. We now have to incorporate the resonances. Of course, the resonances have a properties under parity, charge conjugation, and, uh, and both symmetries considered together. And we consider the most general resonance Lagrangian with one resonant field. That is, we can consider scalar Lagrangian, pseudo-scalar Lagrangian, vector la I mean Lagrangian. Scalar resonances, pseudo-scalar resonances, vector resonances, and axial vector resonances. We make a model in which we have a Lagrangian, the low energy Lagrangian we had before, and all these resonances. Okay. If we want to build a, a good resonance Lagrangian, we, we have to incorporate also the kinetic terms of the of the resonances and what is important here is how can we make the resonances interact with the other terms so when we want to build this Lagrangian resonance Lagrangian we have to determine this tensor sky okay this is just the interaction terms of the of the of the Lagrangian we put one resonance and all the interaction terms we can we can put to the order four. So if the resonance scales at at two powers of the counting or or two powers of the derivatives, well we can put here some tensors that at most order p two p square. When we do this, we obtain this. In the, the, the interaction term, for example, for this pseudo-scalar term would be this term interacting with a resonance, a uh, 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 pseudo-scalar resonance. This term, the same, this f mu nu minus in, would interact with a vectorial resonance. Okay, this is what we can do with bosonic, bosonic terms. With bosonic, well, the, the bosonic part of the resonance Lagrangian. If we consider also, tam also the fermionic terms, the, the list grows a lot. And we have to work with these interaction terms. Basically, this table 
you don't have to look at the numbers or, or the, the formulas. It's just the interaction term of our Lagrangian. And this is the Lagrangian then we want to project into the low energy Lagrangian. We want to match this Lagrangian with all the operators had bef we had before. Okay, once we do this, we have to do the matching, as I said. For doing the matching, we follow the, the next steps. Well, first of all, we want to, why we want to do the matching? I, I said that at the beginning of the, of, the, of the seminar, but we want to match this, both these two Lagrangians because we want to obtain the low energy constant that this is what we know experimentally okay and in the low in this constant is containing the information from the heavier states so when we analyze and we go to the to our experiments and we obtain a1 the, the parameter a1 is 1.02 well what predicts the standard model one point pam pam was the difference would be the information from the heavier states, just as the effective theory works. And looking at the experiment, we can predict what are the, the heavier states of the, what resonances are active or no, are not active in, in our theory. Okay, how we do the matching, how we integrate these resonances. Okay. First, we get the equation of motion of the resonances that are these. Once we have the equation of motion, we solve this equation of motions to order p to the square, and these resonances we put in the Lagrangian we had before, in this Lagrangian. We have solved um, the resonances up to order p to the square, and we substitute the solution of the resonance equation of motion here, and we obtain this. This is the Lagrangian in the order um, order p to the four. Now we have to do the matching. We have changed. We have matched. We have put the resonance all the inform all the resonance informations through these tensors, and we have this solution. And now when we do that, we expand these terms and we can write the low energy operators and the low energy constants are these. For example, I remind, this is what we had, okay? Put in a simplified way and only considering the, the bosonic part, okay? This was the interaction term. Remember that we have to mix two of these tensors for making the order p to the 4 Lagrangian. So when we mix two of these terms, for example, if we mix these terms times the same term, we m would make an operator and when we, we expand this operator in the basis, for example, we have that the operator O1 has a contribution from this interaction term. And you can do this with all the operators. Of course, it's easier to um, multiply this times this rather than instead of multiplying wait, this times this. You have a lot of terms more in, in this case than in the other. Okay, when you do so, well, there are a lot of terms, these terms that have appeared are uh, well, more terms. Not more terms. Well, you, when, when, when you do this with fermions, you obtain a lot of new, but you can obtain all the, the predictions for, for, for the low energy constant for all the operators we had before. The problem here is we have to or eliminate operators from here due to suppressions that we don't know, or we can test this experimentally. We could imagine a hundred experiments 
and we can test every one of the of the of these constants of these parameters that we don't know but the information of the heavier state or the um, of the resonance theory is encoded in this low energy constant okay and now finally we are trying to make constraints to this resonance theory from above from the theory we don't know this is the last step okay and we are going to we are not working with all the Lagrangian we just take the bosonic part of the Lagrangian okay and we just consider axial and vector resonances and the other well, it's just to make an example of how we can extract information from a theory we don't know so in this simplified model we have our interaction Lagrangian that has seven parameters that are these five parameters and the masses of the resonances we are dealing with okay the constraints we are going to obtain are fundamental although we don't know the true electroweak theory this is not the, not the case as I said before of resonance chiral perturbation theory because we know QCD in this case we don't know the above theory okay these are examples of how what we can obtain constraints without knowing the, the theory above we know for example that we behave theories theories that behave well in the ultraviolet or have the good unitarity properties demand that form factors fall as 1 over s form factors are terms that we can obtain from the green function for example the Drake green function of two Goldstone bosons or one scalar and one Higgs Higgs like term and one boson well when we obtain this the form factor we calculate the green function functions and the form factors are these okay. imposing this condition that has to fall as 1 to the s in the limit these form factors go to zero and we have a constraint we have two constraints obtained for the unknown theory we just knew that well-behaved theories fall as 1 over s and from here we can obtain a relation between two parameters that we didn't know we can do this with more things we can do the same it's more complicated but we do the same with the self-energies of gates bosons this is the the self energy that changes the chirality of the well the safe it's a, a self energy that enters one b when b b gates when boson b and escapes the the right component that's to say the photon okay when we do this we can obtain we can know information about this self energy depending on the theory if we have a complete chiral symmetry if the our fundamental theory is chiral this has to go to zero but we of course know that our theory is not chiral because the the standard model the low energy theory is not chiral we're gonna do this if we had asymptotically free theories like QCD we could impose this condition over these self energies for example, QCD, we know that behaves this well, this way. But electroweak theory is not asymptotically free. But there are lower, lower conditions. For example, lower condition than this is one of these. Where you can relate the imagi imaginary part this way, and you can impose two conditions that are called the Weinberg-Sum rules. And the first Weinberg-Sum rules are valid in gauge theories with non-trivial ultraviolet fixed points and we can suppose with great arguments great reasons that our fundamental theory of the electroweak group satisfy the Weinberg-Sum rule the first Weinberg-Sum rules and it's questionable if our theory our fundamental theory satisfy the second Weinberg-Sum rules when we do this, we calculate the self-energies to, to leading order 
this is this, we obtain two, two new constraints, and if we can do the same to the next leading order, and we obtain new constraints. You can see that these constraints are the same we obtain from the vector form factor and the axial form factor. Well, the point of these Weinberg sum, sum rules is that you can take information from theory, a fundamental theory you don't know. And from this, we have obtained five constraints over the seven param parameters we had before. So you can imagine a lot of things with seven parameters. You can do everything with seven parameters. But if you have five constraints, you have a parameter space more limited. More limited. Okay. How can you compare these constraints? Well, I have chosen precisely the, the seven parameters before because we can relate those parameters to what is called oblique parameters. The oblique parameters are parameters that are tested experimentally. We know experimentally its values. And this parameter relates, well, is the new physics in the difference between the set self-energy at Q at this energy and Q zero. And the T parameter, it measures in some way the Kistadel symmetry breaking. Okay. Their, their definitions, I don't mind the definition of S, S parameter and T parameter, but you can express this as spectral functions. Well, the spectral function can be related to the to the correlator we had before, to the to the self-energy we had before, and we can do similar things with the spectral function of the of, of this spectral function. Okay, the point is not the formula. The point is that, that we can relate precisely these parameters with the Weinberg sum rules we had before. And if we analyze the the S parameter to the leading order and the T parameter to the leading order and we compare with our experimental results, we obtain that then the first of all that the mass that axial mass is greater than the vectorial mass and they have to be higher than 1.5 TeV at 98% confidence level. We can do I think I have lost one slide. No, I don't know. Okay, no, no, I know. When you when you analyze the next to linear order, there are huge calculations. But what you obtain is if you only consider the first Weimersan rule. That is to say that. We, we have two conditions, the first Weimersan rules that we can apply to well-behaved theories and the second Weimersan rule where was questionable, okay. If we consider only the Weimersan rules, we obtain that if we, okay, kappa w is the measures the difference between the coupling from the standard models with the Higgs. Okay, you have the standard model Higgs coupling, and you add a factor uh, coupling kappa sub kappa kappa w. So if you when you recover the standard model, you have kappa equal to one. Okay, okay. What you obtain is you know that kappa should be near one. So when you have this condition, you <laughs> obtain that. If you consider a large splitting between the two masses of the resonances, you are far away from kappa equal to one. But if you consider uh, similar masses for for the uh, uh, this is a, a v, no a w, for the for, for the vectorial resonance and the axial resonance, you obtain a, a parameter that is more according to the standard model what the standard model says and the test also says. So if you have kappa equal to one, if you have something that is similar to the standard model, the masses for, for the resonances have to be similar. And if you consider also the second Weinberg-Sam rule, you obtain you can obtain one plot of this. These are the S parameter versus 
the t parameter and these are the the experimental region with, within one sigma two sigma and three sigmas okay what you said what you can see is and this is a growing these lines these vertical lines uh, mean the a growing of a vectorial mass for, for the vectorial resonance and this kappa sub w means how close is the coupling from the scalar to the standard model that's to say how similar is the Higgs boson to the Higgs the standard Higgs mode Higgs boson and what you see is that the value, values away from the standard model Higgs are discarded that's to say the coupling from the Higgs to the Goldstone boson has to be similar to one and low masses for the vectorial um, resonance are discarded too let's say if you consider the two Weinberg-Sam rules you obtain that the axial and vectorial masses ha has to be the same order and they have to be higher than 4 TeV but this is just the energy we're going to analyze in the, in the new run of the LHC so finally conclusions well we are all asking if we have only the standard model Higgs but th for this is crucial to understand how the symmetry is broken and how we can give rise to to mass with another ways and this is this make a uh, raise the strongly coupled models okay we have understand how the theory how the symmetry is broken and we have make a low energy lagrangian in which we have included the fermions we have make a complete low energy Lagrangian including all the degrees of freedom we have to do the same with a resonance Lagrangian so we have established the low energy con low energy effective theory mm -hmm. and the high energy effective theory so we can match these two theories and we obtain constraints from the low energy we have also included uh, constraints considering property that good theories have to have so we can make we can put additional constraints to a resonance theory from the unknown theory so we can study with more precision this resonance resonance theory resonance perturbation theory the problem we have too many operators to study the whole theory we need to new ideas and new suppression mechanisms are required to reduce the number of operators and work properly so we can make the proper test we have we don't have 194 tests from the fundamental theory we have a limited number but instead we have new idea for new ideas for continuing this kind of work and now with new experimental data we can put more emphasis in this low energy constant we will know with more precision this low energy constant so we can move the constraint we we have and now for the masses of the resonances of all the parameters and we are waiting for new data and that's all and thank you very much for listening so any questions any comments about data from okay for example well there are a lot of of parameters so I obviously I don't know about all, all of them but I know that for example a4 and a5 come from the well a4 and a5 relate only gauge bosons okay and um, well gauge bosons I, I said before that are related with the with the equivalence theorem to the longitudinal polarization of the gauge boson okay h4 and h5 can be obtained from the self energies of the set set boson 
I think there are experiments that come from there and I think A5 is very close to one, I don't know the experimental limits and the other, well, I don't know, but what you have to do is you have, you consider one problem, imagine one series of case boxes going to another and you put the standard model and also the operators that are, that you, well you have to consider the operators that are, have to do with this kind of process and you obtain and you obtain one calculation and if you take out the contribution from the standard model you have, have an information from these kind of parameters this is the rest I don't know and of course the fermions is new we have incorporated this fermion well the fermion the fermion term we don't have experiments now to 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 compare with the resonance theory but the, this is the reason because new that I w it will be very important for us yes which low energy constant will you personally be focusing on? I don't know. Ah, sorry. Which low energy constant, uh, which constant will you be focusing on? So, uh, which experimental data sets are? In this work, in this in this work, we are not focusing particularly particular low energy constant. Mm -hmm. But in the past, I well, in, a, in another work, I focused in these two. This is the reason uh -huh. we can. That's why you knew. Mm -hmm. okay. The other no, we are just making a general effective field theory, not focusing on one particular. I have a question. The MA parameter can be larger than the MW and in the, in the last plot that you present, one before the conclusion. Because you put the range that better, best fit the, the standard model is when the ratio is almost lower than one, okay. but could be larger than one? No, it can't because... One moment. I think I have one play when you can see this. Okay. If you consider these two huh. winders and rules, you here have that necessarily f b is f b has to be greater than okay, f a to the by the and if for the satisfying the, the other relation you have that ah, okay. that the mass of the actual person has to be greater. And, and another question is in the, because in this case is the perturbation theory I mean perturbative uh, field theory but assuming electro weak but could you also expect some contribution from, for instance, singlets or other fields that are not strictly related with SU2 and other gauge group of the standard model? And like, other gauge group? Like, separated somehow from the... Well, in the... We have, well, really this world we have expand the symmetry group to a, another larger group in which we are not considering that the... the the B minus cell symmetry is 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 is, is concerning, mm -hmm. but expanding the symmetry to higher groups. Well, we haven't done anything of that, but in any case, any uh, superior group has to include. Well, SU two times SU two has to be a subgroup of this theory. So. In that case, you obtain a greater effective field theory and, of course, more and more operators. And the problem is we want to reduce them. So it's... Yeah, it's a mess. It's a mess. Could, <laughs> it's <laughs> yeah. Hey, I was wondering, for instance, if you have right-handed neutrinos that, in principle, they are completely decoupled, if they could it, they well, could have some kind of... In this case, we are considering SU2 yeah. to right times SU2 to left. Mm -hmm. so I think in that case, we have a symmetry in which right-handed neutrinos is considered. Then with the symmetry breaking, we can eliminate this right-handed neutrino, but with SU2 times SU2, I think we have right-handed neutrinos included. 
but I, we have not focused in particular mm -hmm. elements of, yeah. on the theory. Mm -hmm. so, and yeah, last question for my mm -hmm. And then in the imagine that you have other symmetries like some flavor symmetries or discrete symmetry, this at the end it will kind of destroy some parameters in your expansion, no? I mean, it's going to make more correlation between your group of I, I 100. Have you, are you asking about the particularly symmetry breaking term? Mm -hmm. Or are you talking about some other discrete symmetry? Yeah, ima imagine that there is a di oh, another discrete symmetry. For instance, okay. in, I the, don't, in, I the, don't know. in the quark sector or something like that, that also has some impact okay, in the electroweak. If, if there were an, a discrete symmetry in the fundamental theory, the low energy theory has to have the same symmetry and we don't know mm -hmm. of its existence. So if, for example, if we have another discrete symmetry like parity, it is impossible that it is only in the fundamental sector but not in the in the lowest energy. So we can discard this kind of... Mm. But, but the contrary case, you can find that, uh, for example, B minus L, we know that it's uh, an accidental symmetry of the standard model. There is no reason why B minus L has to be conserved. But for example, in the fundamental theory, we can find a, 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 a reason why this has to be this symmetry has to be imposed. This the the, the opposite question ha could happen. Mm -hmm. This is the reason why in the general world we include this possible symmetry. Also, because we at first we don't know if it is broken or it's conserved. So, if there is no other comment or suggestion, we can thank again the speaker. Thank you.